Hey everybody, I'm Tony Sandoval and I'm here on behalf of the DIY Tool Shed Podcast. Now I already know what you're thinking, this is a video, but the whole project is called the DIY Tool Shed Podcast, based on an audio podcast that you listen to. You can find us over on the MeWe social media website on the DIY Tool Shed Podcast page. I hope you come and check us out because what we've got over there is the podcast comes out once a week. We have videos that are going to cover everything from tool reviews to how-tos, tips and tricks, all kinds of things like that. And we have written articles that come out about weekly or so that are going to just help people learn a little bit about different things. Tools, types of tools, things to do, methods. So we're going to have a lot of interesting things go on. I hope you check us out. All right, so today's video is going to be a tool review. What I'm reviewing for you today is one of my new favorite DIY level tools, um, not a pro level tool, like something you use on a job site every day, but yeah, why well, so you're gonna, you're busy and active DIYer, building things, doing things that you do it infrequently, not all day, every day. There's a lines of tools for that. And Works, which makes this guy right here, is one of those brands. And this guy, which is the Works Exact Track Circular Saw, is what we're going to review. One of the great things about this tool, this brand, is that it's cordless based set of tools and it's priced for your home user DIY kind of person at price point, but it's not just its price point. And I think during our review, we'll see that show up. So I hope you stick around. We're gonna go test this puppy out and show you some of the features, benefits, and what it can really do. All right, we're gonna talk right now about one of the most important parts of using a circular saw, any circular saw. I wanna talk about the blade. Cause people, <laughs> when they get a new saw, one of the hardest things sometimes is figuring out, well, how do I get a blade on? How do I change the blade? And for the works, uh, exact track and they have a couple different other saws we you know but the exact track it, it's 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 pretty much a very common system that they use one of the really nice things I like is the arbor it uses a regular hex key you get in here you see right there it's a simple hex key arbor you turn it right here when you turn it at the very top of the saw you see this little button here okay that's a lock so it keeps it from spinning while you're turning. That means it, it's gonna be easier for you to, to loosen this, okay? So you just, you know, I like that. It's a nice feature because not all saws have that. And they, you're spinning and you're playing games. So that's a feature I actually like. You hit that button, you know, you're gonna pop this up and then you're gonna hit the button and then you're gonna use your hex key. I didn't bring a hex key on this one because I'm gonna use the saw in a minute and What's the point of messing with the blade at this point? I got it on nice tight the way I like it. So, but that's a really nice feature and it's something that gets overlooked on other saws. So works actually, I really like, uh, they've got newer lock systems nowadays on more, you know, newer versions of different saws. And uh, you know, where they've got the pop out clip thing and all that, and those are nice, but I feel safer personally with having the traditional, you know, hex key arbor get a good lock on that thing that blade's not spinning off on you it's not going to wobble cause burn or anything like that uh, so it's a good lock system i really like that uh, one of the better things they've actually did i think on this saw is that it makes it really easy to put on a new blade or change blades out that kind of thing like that okay now all cordless tools are battery power tools. Works just like DeWalt, just like Milwaukee. They've got their own battery-based system. And when you, like I've talked about before, when you buy any 
brand of tools, you're really buying the battery set. This is the base for everything because they're all swappable now. This battery will run about two dozen different tools, same battery system. When you buy any brand, we've talked about it, you're buying the battery system and then the tools interact with all of them. But, A, it is the power switchable, so yeah, I can pop it in, pop it out, and one tool to the next. Nice feature on the works, and, and all of them started getting into the thing, but you get the little battery, you push the little button, it shows you the lights, they all light up, means you got full power. This is only a two amp hour battery. They all come when you buy the packets and the kits, they send you a two amp hour battery. Now for your average home, uh, DIY, uh, not common, you know, not let, you're not doing it a lot. A two hour battery, hey, you know, two amp, uh, two amp hour battery is gonna be fine because you might be spending all of 15 minutes cutting, 20 minutes, you know, whatever for small projects, things like that. But if you're gonna do like a day long project where you know we're out here building a shed or a deck and you're spending the whole day cutting, you want bigger batteries. Works sells a four amp hour and a six amp hour battery. They're bigger, they're chunkier and they add weight, but they'll get the job just like DeWalt, just like Milwaukee, and it gives you more time to use that tool. It also gives you a little bit more power as you're using it at the same time when you get that bigger battery. It's a nice thing to have. You get really consistent pull. But they've done really well. It's, it's, it's very consistent with a lot of the other systems out there, battery-based systems. You put it on the back, it's, it's the groove, got the little pins, conductive pins in it, and you just nice and in, you know. It, it, it doesn't get any better, get any easier than that. Like I said, you push the big orange button, pop it right off, move to the next tool. You know, you gotta get to your drill or whatever, uh, something like that it's right there but I mean so again it's not anything brand new that only they do but they've kept up with everything else and I think this sets them apart with a lot of what other people consider entry-level tools uh, because they still took time to catch up to this kind of battery technology uh, especially using you know with this showing you how much power you have left that's that's it's huge because sometimes you're like, oh, I gotta go cut 20 pieces. So I got enough on this battery to cut 20 pieces. You check and you only got like low on, you know, the, the lowest level on the bar. You ain't cutting 20 pieces. You know, I ain't having, so you go grab another battery. Um, it, it's a nice thing. I, I, I think they did good keeping up with the major brands on their battery system. It's, it's, it's very functional. I like it a lot. All right. The, this is something that every saw has. It's nothing new, but it's important because it's your safety. There's a trigger down here, really easy. It's nice and portable, but you can't move it at all until you hit the safety and hold that in and there you go. Now, the nice thing is you've got your extended handle front. So as you're going, you've got good control while you go. And once it's done, it's done, it's locked again. So again, consistency in features, consistency in what you would find on just about any other saw, they've got it there without adding or making it unnecessary. And I mean, that's what you're looking for when you, you wanna have something where you're familiar with the concept and the placement and they've got it where it should be. You know, one of the things, and I mentioned this before also, I hate to be repetitive, but sometimes you kind of, you get to that point where it's like, the focus is on how usability, you know what I mean? How well it can be used. Are they hiding the way to get to it? And when we talk about other features, okay, so like, you know, we talked about changing the blades and things like that, and it's easy, it's right there. But another nice thing about it is when, you want to change depth. I mean, you do not always cut the same thickness of material. Sometimes you got to cut something really thick. Sometimes you're only cutting a little thing. You don't want to overcut. You don't want to cut into something underneath or too much. And you want to be able to change your depth setting on a saw. But then they hide it on you. And it's a small, hard to get in. They're putting it, tucking it and hiding it here or wherever. And, and it's just no good. Again, works is at a pretty good job 
on keeping it consistent. So you come back here, a nice, easy to get a hold of dial. You know, all you gotta do, turn the dial. Just like that, I'm that easy. Now we wanna set our depth right in here. They've got a guide, okay? And it tells you your max depth, your minimum depth. All you have to do is line it up just like that. So you wanna set it, you know, half inch, one inch, one and a half, all the way down, uh, I mean, get it as far as it'll go. This, this is, so you're cut, barely cutting anything. It's real thin, you know, you're not sticking down too far. Here, you've got max depth. You're, you're really got the full depth of the blade. You can cut, you know, that, that much. Uh, and that's nice. And it, again, all you do is you set it where you want it. Keep in mind your blade, come back to over here, tighten that puppy up. It's a simple, I, the knob is, I got big fingers. It's hard to get into in between things on tools for me. Nice, easy to use knob there. Anybody with any size finger is gonna love that. So again, works, I hand it to you. Depth control is nice. Uh, the, it stays, the base stays nice and firm. There's no wiggle after you've tried to do it, uh, move it up and down after you try to adjust it. It's nice, I love that you kept it simple. You know, I, I believe keep it simple, stupid, kiss method all the way every time. And again, they've managed keeping it simple right there. All right, like this again. When you get to a nice circular saw, any circular saw, one of the features that everybody looks for is your angle or bevel cut. Every saw needs to be able to do an angle or bevel cut. You want to be able to go at least to 45 degrees. Some saws will give you a little bit more, some, you know, a little less. I, usually, I, I can't say I've seen many saws give you less than a 45 degree. A 45 degree is good angle. I mean, that's really where you want because everybody's putting together a 90 degree cut angle, so you got to be able to cut a 45 degrees, okay? That's where your angle, your bevel cut comes in. Right here, again, Works, keeps it simple, easy to access, easy to grip and use, very well marked. Okay, this is nice. I love the marking here. And again, it's a simple twist on there. Nice, and you get your belt, okay? Now the marker is right here, and your markings are here. So all you gotta do is match that up, 30 degrees, there's 40 degrees. It's actually got 50, but it's kind of a weirdo. Mark your little line. It's got a little notch in on there. You just match the notch up. So it will match the mark up 50 degrees. I don't know, maybe a 49. I don't know any that are really that deadly accurate, but usually it's 45 that most people are concerned about. Okay, you mark it on there. Boom, nice, easy, tighten up. You got yourself a good bevel cut. You're ready to go. Off you zoom. So again, back to the consistency. That's the area I think works has excelled is, is, is consistency. They, every major area you need to use a, a circular saw in, they've made it easy to access. And it's not like some divergent way from every other tool. And there's some tool brands out there that they think that to be novel and new, they've got to find a whole new way, a new place to do these things. Work says, no, let's make it easier. I love easier. Good job, Works. Now we get to cutting the mustard here. This is the part where the name of the saw comes in, the exact track, okay? Right there, exact track. What does that mean? Well, usually when it comes to cutting a consistent line, you, you want to cut a nice straight line all the way through, especially on a long rip cut, okay? Now, you've got all kinds of options and tools. You can freehand it. You, you know, I, I ball it all the way down. That's the way I grew up doing it. You just drew your pencil line or your chalk mark, and zoom, you follow the line all down. You got a nice steady hand, it's not a problem. Sometimes you get a nice cold day, you get the shivers and shakes. Uh, maybe sometimes you get a little bit older, maybe sometimes, you know, 
you got a headache and you just can't follow the line very well. So now all of a sudden we need something to keep our line nice and straight. Well, we have a thing out here called track saws. Now you've seen track saws and they've got these little base, fancy base design where they lock into a piece of metal just to track. And then they follow because they're locked in, it's perfectly straight because it's locked into a straight channel. Track saw. Works said, let's make a track saw. I'm imagining this is the conversation. I'm not saying this is what they actually did. But Works came out and said, you know, let's make a track saw without a track. Whoa. This is an interesting idea because how do you do that? Okay, so when we're gonna do this, back into your, your standard mode here, and then we wanna go to the exact track, pop it over, Right here and it pops up half of it just lifts okay the beauty part of that is I can take another straight edge piece of wood and use it as a guide you know just about anywhere that's my guide that's my cutting area now just run it right along that's a beautiful thing and it's because it's a straight line edge like a track saw okay it runs right on the edge parallel to the uh, uh, board. So basically the easiest thing, again, we're talking about a rip cut. So you're going along the length of it. You just set this down against your piece of wood here. You got a test piece straight shot like this. Get it right on up. Get your straight cut right on in. Hey, we're back in the workshop. So, we got to play with this little talk about it a little bit. I like it a lot. I really do. I like the works brand for what it is. I like the things that they do in general. Uh, like I said, it's not quite, you know, your all day, every day, you know, heavy use tool but it's a it's a good tool it really is i think anybody is going to be glad to have this run it really surprised me after i first got into it and i continue to be surprised by how well they hold up and how well they perform so works did a good job on this i really think so um gotta have realistic expectations like i said it's not an all day every day on a job site tool but it, you know it, it, it does well for what it is it does very well so I think you'll like it. Give it a shot if you get a chance to. Maybe get it as a gift and you decide to help yourself out when you're looking for a new platform for a battery cordless tool set. And I think you'll go far with works and the exact track circular saw. Hey, I'm really glad you made it. The opportunity to come out and help other DIY folks try to get good tools and get good new ways to do things, new things to do is part of the fun and the, the love, the passion of what you know, DIY is all about, do it yourself, get it done. So I'm really glad you came down to check this video out. I hope you check out our podcast. I hope you check out the articles that we find. Again, they're on the MeWe site, MeWe.com. Look for the DIY Tool Shed podcast page. It's right there. Um, I think you'll like what you see, and I hope you come down and give you know give us your feedback, give your comments. You liked it, you didn't like it. What you'd like to see more of? Uh, what you thought of the tool? If you have one, um, really want to get your feedback and, and find out what you want to find out about. It'll come up somewhere in a podcast a video or in an article that we write. So come on down, stick around, and uh, see you next time.